Yeah. Put you right in the hot we're, seat. We're, yeah. We've been following these guys, and all of a sudden, you guys start and, swinging at me. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet you. Oh, Great to meet you, person. Nice to you. Thank you. Well, uh, we've been following you guys when you guys started up, and obviously when EMC snatched you up, we were at EMC World, and and we had Pat Gelsinger on on the cube, and right. I asked him specifically about some acquisitions, and he said there's some things coming, and then I find out that you know Pat really <laughs> likes the deal, and yesterday he was on, and. You know, and so Pat Gelsinger is, you know, almost his one year. So I was only teasing you about selling out. You literally did sell to EMC, but uh, we were following you with some of the, in the some of the open source side as well. I mean, right. And we were on the analyst call, and I brought that up, and you addressed it. So, so first question: Talk about Green Plum. What happened? You, what, how, what, <laughs> what evolved for the folks out there? Your company sold to EMC. Take us through that quick story, and we'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the uh, obviously the condensed version here. Uh, Greenplum was founded, uh, you know, almost ten years ago, actually, uh, uh, by Luke Lonergan and Scott Yara. And the whole premise of the company was, to their credit, was that data warehousing and analytics was going to explode over time, and that uh, the predominant view of how data warehousing was done at that time was around teradata. And then at that time, Natiza was coming on, uh, on board as well. But it was this integrated proprietary hardware platform with software to solve a specific, you know, what I, I would say is a niche problem of, of data warehousing. And a lot of times the CIO would be upset about that box coming into their environment because it was a proprietary box, didn't fit into their, into their architecture of what they were trying to do. And so the simple premise was, if you believe this is going to be a big market and not, and not stay, you know, smaller or niche oriented that history will prove that a software only play is the right is the right direction and so that's the premise of the company uh, now the challenge with that is building a world-class MPP database engine is non-trivial right and and so there's just no shortcuts to hiring great people and getting kind of the world's best talent assembled in a room to go tackle that and get some proprietary technology and do all that great stuff yeah and so we took Postgres as the underlying database from your the open source uh, uh, question at the beginning, and 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 and, and kind of ripped out the innards, if you will, to, to make it work in this MPP scale out architecture way, and so uh, that's what Greenplum is about. And so th uh, we came to market in 2006, and uh, and I guess the controversial decision I hired in in 2006. My background was Sun. I'd spent 19 years at Sun. And so the controversial decision we made, normally at a startup you start small and then grow your way into the market. Right. And we felt this market was going to explode quickly and that we had to take on, and our software was built for the world's largest uh, data warehouse analytic environments. And so we went after the largest enterprise environments in the globe. And as a startup, that's, yeah, a, that's, big a challenge. that's a challenge and that's a tricky proposition. Now, the lucky break we got, uh, as we say, and this is a bit ironic, was that Sun Microsystems, under the leadership of Jonathan at the time, uh, had a box coming out called Thumper that Andy Bechtelsheim had designed and was looking for more applications and solutions that they could build on top of that. And so uh, he got introduced to Greenplum at the time and, and, and to their credit, they quickly uh, embraced Greenplum as part of their data warehousing strategy. And so that was the break we needed because that gives you credibility to show up in larger enterprise clients and have a bigger vendor behind you. And so that's how we went to market in 2006, uh, uh, going after these, these enterprise uh, uh, class customers. So, and so the, much, the last three years have been focused on building, building that customer base and proving our technology in their environment. How so much was EMC pay for you guys? Uh, was that disclosed? That, that was not disclosed. <laughs> you don't you want to disclose it in the cube right now? I, I, I don't want to disclose so it. I'll, I'll let Pat it. Or, or Joe or someone One of my that. clients... Uh, I, I would say we, we were undervalued. <laughs> of course. One of my clients described uh, their problem in you know, the data warehousing business intelligence problem, and they, they used the metaphor of a snake swallowing a basketball. And it sounds <laughs> like that's the business that you guys are really in, is helping address that, that challenge. Yeah, I, and, and I would characterize it a little bit differently, uh, but, I, but I think the analogy somewhat holds. I mean, I, I think what's coming at, at, at every enterprise around the globe is, is the notion that you know, data is critical to their future. And, and, and not just taking extracts of data. Uh, if you look at you know, everything around the room here, uh, everyone interacting with the internet, uh, every one of those interactions contains some data that's probably useful to the business. And so historically, data warehousing has been about extracting the data and, and doing an extract or, or, or a summarization of that data and then looking for insights in more of a batch-oriented way. 
Uh, we think that world's changing dramatically. It's like looking back in the rearview mirror. Yeah, right? it's looking I mean, in the rearview yeah. mirror for kind of trends and, 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 and analysis. And so we, we believe that you have to take much more of an internet scale, agile kind of approach to data warehousing. That's, that's the big change that's going to happen. And what's underneath that change is that the advent of commodity hardware, if you think about you know, multi-core technology, uh, the storage technology that, that EMC and others bring, bring to the equation, and then the advancement of, of uh, interconnect and ethernet, so 10 gig ethernet, et cetera, those things have been advancing at, at, at a tremendous pace over the last 20 years. And yet data warehousing and analytics is still viewed as this big batch environment. And so what we believe is that the scale out being very agile from an analytics perspective will be the way that businesses start to do business. This won't just be about a data warehouse technology. Uh, this will be about how do I plug in to the existing infrastructure, and that's why it's timely here with, with obviously VMware and what's Bill. going on, to, to leverage a virtualized stack to allow data warehousing workloads to drive business value to, to customers. We, ha we had uh, a guy from Excel Partners, big VC, invested in a company called Cloudera um, that does a lot of Hadoop, commercializing Hadoop, and you know, big clusters of commodity hardware you mentioned. What, you got the big data argument. We just had Fusion IO, they talk about you know, fast, big data. Sure. What, what, what's your vision around this whole movement? I mean, you're right, Facebook is throwing off more data, people's uh, gestural data, what do you call it? Whatever you want to call it, I mean, you know, it's being used. I mean, Dallas Cowboys are using data from real-time data around promotions, concessions. So this business policy around data is very valuable. So talk about the Hadoop kind of world, the big cluster farms. Um, we were talking on a session earlier about you know, power is going to be a big issue. It's going to be massive clusters. Sure. And you need agility and speed, low latency data transfer. So where does that open source community fit in? And where does that, you know, the big EMCs kind of fit into that? Well, it's like any of these big, big movements along the way. So, so first off, we believe in it. We embrace it. In fact, we did a, 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 a MapReduce interface into our engine. Uh, we know uh, Mike Olson, the Cloudera guys, pretty well. Great guy. He's a great uh, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> stay tuned for us working together. So we, we, we don't think there's one answer to the question around big data, right? There's still going to be lots of SQL access. Top there's of going the first to be inning <laughs> there? Totally, yeah. Yeah. totally top of the first inning. And I don't think it'll stop at MapReduce and Hadoop, right? There'll be other constructs as well. And so from our perspective, we're providing an engine for that to run on. And then it's about provisioning and how do you start to get collaboration across that data. So uh, uh, we are embracing that. You're excited about that. We're movement. very excited about that. And I think it fits in perfectly to where enterprises are going to go uh, with their big data problem. Can we talk a little bit about you know, the whole VMware play? Because I mean, a lot of the clients that I talk to say things like, we're not, we're not going to share this infrastructure. We need all the horsepower we can get. But we were talking earlier, and you actually see, especially for data marts and the like, a real big opportunity to, to virtualize that, that infrastructure. Yeah, so there's two, two, and that's a really good question. There's two points going on here. So one, the, the, the point about sharing infrastructure. So it's the same infrastructure that you can use for multiple applications. So we believe that world exists and will continue to exist if you think about my premise that people are going to look for access to all types of data and by the way you know at the beginning of the day they may not know what they're looking for right, right and right. so that evolves so you've got to yeah, have that, that sure. kind of ag agility uh, secondly uh, you're right uh, in a lot of cases when 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 you're looking at workloads for data analytics you want as much power as you can throw at it so we're not talking about turning that off we're talking about having a, a way to provision that automatically and have some user management around that. If, you wanna, if you've got a big problem you need to solve from an analytics perspective, you may want to throw a thousand cores at it and you know, 100 terabytes. But you also may want to scale that back tomorrow. Yes, right. right. And so when we talk about virtualized worlds, we're talking about being able to have that, that knob that you can turn to get that infrastructure and get that data quickly and then give the power to the user you know, with some management around that. The, obviously, security, authentication, all those things matter. And then having the, the kind of the business management over the top of that, of getting the right resources to the right users. Okay, so this is, you're feeling that, that, based on what you just said, that will resonate with application heads, right? Because you're going to make their lives a lot better, more resources faster. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny world because in, in data warehousing, if you talk to most enterprises, from a user community perspective, they'll say, it's really hard. I'm not happy with my CIO. I'm not happy how I get access to my data infrastructure. I say I want a, a 100 terabyte data mart, and three months later I may have it, yeah, right. right? And so what we're providing now is a bridge to the IT organization 
through partnerships like with VMware that you create these virtualized environments that people have access to. And now all of a sudden the business users are much happier, mm. right? They've never had that capability. And also give them that knob that they can turn up the power and the performance that they need and the access to the data sources that they need. That's the other problem we're solving for, is how do you do data integration right. better Dave, across Dave, the we enterprises? We've got a couple minutes left. I know you got one question. I got one, one okay, final okay. question. Um, looking forward, I mean, you have a lot of history with Sun, you're at a cutting edge company with Greenplum, you're now with EMC, the leader in, in uh, storage virtualization, number one, as Dave wrote about. Um, what's the future look like? Give us a, your view, I mean, given what you know, and your experience, and kind of what cloud enables. How big is it going to be, and what, what are some of the things that you might see? And it not even related to, to the data business or your business, uh, it could be, but what are the things will the world be seeing? I mean, Apple has a big announcement going on today. Right. Apple's the, the epitome of edge robustness, right. know, the user experience, right. and the expected user experience now. So talk about, from your personal perspective, what you see unfolding. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is, is uh, you know, so we think data will become core, right, to how applications get delivered, et cetera, both in your, in your business life and in your personal life. And I think our, our job is to provide access to those data, an engine that allows you to scale and provide those services in meaningful ways that we, we just can't envision today. If you think about all the things that are coming at people about who you are and what you're try how you're interacting with yeah. these systems, I think just being that enabler right, from a technology perspective is going to be a huge trend. And I think it's fundamentally going to shift the way people think about uh, their interaction with infrastructure. I think Paul talked about it the right way, right? That the, the fundamental shift that's going on around virtualized infrastructure is going to be critical and touch every aspect of our life. I, I think the other point that, that maybe is a, a, a little less visible, it's, it's not only about moving infrastructure closer to data, if you will. It's also about connecting people to this new world, right? So how do people collaborate? People-centric model. People-centric model, totally, around who are the rock stars inside enterprises getting insights into their business? And how do they share that with the executives of the organization? Or how do I share that into my personal life, et cetera? Now, obviously, to the earlier question, security, authentication, those things really There's matter. There's some minimums that need to be achieved. They have to like be there. Table right? stakes. But that yeah. speaks to why you have to have this common infrastructure, yeah. like VMware is talking about. That speaks to the whole about. VMware proposition. Exactly, exactly. So you can think of us as really the killer app on top of that infrastructure, connecting data across the Data warehouse has always been this like weird like back room operation, exactly. like what's going on back there, slow, you know, archiving. And, and that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about bringing data to the forefront. To the, to Which the is masses, what businesses want. Right? That's I mean, the agility exactly. message too. It's People the agility that. message. And, 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 but it's also, you know, as I mentioned, the power user to the executives, to the consumers, right? Making that work in a very seamless way. And this, this speaks to why I think EMC, you know, to give my, my boss a little credit here, to Pat and, and Joe, I think had the foresight to see where this was headed and, uh, and thought Greenplum was the right asset to put well, inside of EMC. Well, we want to congratulate you on the acquisition, your team, um, well done. You guys have been working hard. Now, of course, you've got more work to do. You've got to start hiring people and, and, and ramping up. So uh, good luck with that. Thank you. Bill Cook, CEO of Greenplum. We've got uh, Sanjay Mershandani, CIO of EMC, coming up next. And, He's uh, my customer now. Ah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks. Nice nice thanks.